Alright, well this is a Shabbat Shalom. I uh, will be dealing um, with the next 100 laws um, that the Christian Church has made into straw men. And only a few of these laws, as we discussed before, um, have actually been relaxed for the Gentiles. Now, I would challenge anyone in these next set of laws to actually say that God has willingly um, cancelled these laws out. Um, when it talks about the changing of times and that sort of thing, it's really speaking about the Antichrist, but God really wants us to understand how to keep true time. And this is the next set of laws I'm going to read out. It's about times and seasons. So that the new month will be solemnly, solemnly proclaimed as holy, and the months and years shall be calculated by the heavenly luminaries, which is in Genesis 1, 14 to 16, Exodus 12, 2. Um, that they are the authority that God has appointed um, to give us real time. Not to travel on Shabbat outside the limits of one's place of residence, Exodus sixteen twenty nine, To sanctify a Shabbat that God has already sanctified, made it for man, you know, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, Exodus 28. Not to work on a Shabbat, Exodus twenty ten. To rest on a Shabbat um, from your world, worldly labors, Exodus twenty three twelve thirty four twenty one, to celebrate the festivals Passover, Shavuot, Sukkot, Exodus twenty three fourteen, to rejoice on the festivals Deuteronomy sixteen fourteen, to appear in the sanctuary on the festivals Deuteronomy sixteen sixteen, to remove shamets on the eve of Passover. Um, which is um, leaving Exodus twelve fifteen. Um, to rest on the first day of Passover Exodus twelve sixteen Leviticus twenty three seven. Not to work on the first day of Passover Exodus twelve sixteen Leviticus twenty three sixty seven. To rest on the seventh day of the Passover Exodus twelve sixteen Leviticus twenty three eight. Not to work on the um, seventh day. Of Passover, Exodus twelve sixteen, Leviticus twenty three eight, to eat matzah on the first night of Passover, Exodus twelve eighteen. Well, that doesn't necessarily say matzah is actually on leaving barley bread. Um, matzah is not barley bread; it's a mixture. Okay, so again, that's a slight variation that we got in Judaism. That no shamits, which uh, of course is leaving, be in the Israelites' possession during Passover, Exodus 12.19. Not to eat any food containing sh um, shamits on Passover, Exodus 12.20. Not to eat shamits on Passover, Exodus 13.3. That shamits should not be seen in an Israelite's home during Passover, Exodus 13.7. To discuss the departure from Egypt on the first night of the Passover, Exodus 13.8. Not to eat shamits every midday on the fourteenth uh, of Aviv. Um, okay, uh, Deuteronomy sixteen three. Of course, you can um, discuss. This is the time that also Christ was crucified. He became the, sp the spotless lamb, and also the unleavened bread. And um, you know, when you observe the Lord's Supper, he is that um, bread who is broken for us. So this all, all refers to these laws and commands. It's a command that, that the Lord gave us, um, likewise. Um, to count 49 days from the time of cutting of the Omar. This is just from the Judaism website I'm, I'm reading out. But truly it is um, seven Sabbaths. It's actually called the Feast of Sabbaths, not the Feast of Weeks. Because um, God says in Leviticus 23.15, count seven Sabbaths. So, you know... Um, that's what you got to do and they're actually lunar counts and once you've done that you've counted these seven lunar sabbaths you actually add 50 days to get to the true time um, of the beginning of the wheat harvest which is um, the true day of Pentecost Okay, that's, that's the actual true counting of the Omar to rest on Shavuot Leviticus 23.21 not to work on Shavuot Leviticus 23.21 to rest on Rosh Hashanah, Leviticus 23.24 Not to work on Rosh Hashanah, Leviticus 23.25 To hear the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, Numbers 29.1 To 
to fast on Yom Kippur, Leviticus 23.27, not to eat or drink on Yom Kippur, Leviticus 23.29, not to work on Yom Kippur, Leviticus 23.31, to rest on Yom Kippur, Leviticus 23.32, to rest on the first day of Sukkot, Leviticus 23.35, not to work on the first day of Sukkot, Leviticus 23.35, to rest on the eighth day of Sukkot, which is Semne Ezret, Leviticus 23.36, not to work on the eighth day of Sukkot, which is Semne Ezret, um, Leviticus 23.36, um, to take during Sukkot a palm branch and three other um, plants, Leviticus 23.40, to dwell in booths seven days during Sukkot, Leviticus 23.42. Obviously, you just do what you can, um, wh what you possibly can, um, to obey the Lord's commandments. Okay, out of that, none of us can keep them all. That's why Christ had to die, but he didn't die so that they're done away. It's very important to recognize this. Now, the next set of laws are dietary laws, and um, Christ didn't come to make pork clean, he came to make the unclean Gentiles. Um, proclaim them clean if they confess faith um, in Jesus Christ you know and they're made clean through the blood of Jesus Christ not through the blood of pigs okay we're not meant to eat blood or anything strangled and these things actually um, make us fornicate as the Apostle Paul taught so we're actually to avoid these things because they invite demons into the, the body again Chris LaSala should really and just review that little um, doctrine that um, that he has. It'll probably take him a while. He's a he's a new believer. He's doing extremely well, walking very closely with the Lord. But um, it'll take him a little while to be refined in certain doctrines. And to be honest, it's no big deal giving up, up pork. If you can give up smoking and alcohol, then you can surely give up pork. So here we go to examine um, the marks in cattle, as to distinguish the clean from the unclean. Leviticus 11.2 Not to eat the flesh of unclean beasts. Leviticus 11.4 To examine the marks in fish so as to distinguish the clean from the unclean. Leviticus 11.9 Not to eat unclean fish. Leviticus 11.11 .11. To examine the marks on a fowl and as to distinguish the clean from the unclean. Deuteronomy 14.11 Not to eat unclean fowl. Leviticus 11.13 to examine the marks in locusts as to distinguish the clean from the unclean, Leviticus 11.21. Not to eat a worm found in fruit, Leviticus 11.41. Not to eat of things that creep upon the earth, Leviticus 11.41.42. Not to eat any vermin of the earth, Leviticus 11.44. Not to eat things that swarm in the water, Leviticus 11.43. Not to eat winged insects, um, Deuteronomy 14.19. Not to eat the flesh of a beast that is terepha, which is a lit torn, which is a torn beast. Um, Exodus 22.30, okay, Exodus 22.30 for that one. Not to eat the flesh of a beast that died of itself, Deuteronomy 14.21. To slay cattle, deer and fowl according to the laws of Shetare, um, if their flesh is to be eaten, Deuteronomy 12.21 that basically makes it um, kosher um, not to eat a limb removed from a living beast Deuteronomy 12.23 that includes roadkill okay. not to slaughter an animal and it's young on the same day Leviticus 22.28 not to take the mother bird with the young Deuteronomy 22.6 to set the mother bird free when taking the nest Deuteronomy 22.67 not to eat the flesh of an ox that was um, condemned to be stoned, Exodus 21.28. Not to boil meat with milk, uh, Exodus 23.19. Not to eat flesh with milk, Exodus um, 34.26. Um, not to eat of the thigh vein which shrank, Genesis 32.33. Um, Not to eat shilev, which is uh, tallow fat. Um, Leviticus 7.23 not to eat blood Leviticus 7.26 to cover the blood of undomesticated animals which is deer or fowl that have been killed Leviticus 17.13 not to eat or drink like a glutton or a drunkard 
um, not to rebel against father or mother. Okay, so Leviticus 19, 26 and Deuteronomy 21, 20. Very clear. Okay, Christ never did them, the apostles never did them, and you don't do them, basically, because you've been made clean by the blood of Christ. Okay, the next set of laws will be business practice, not to do wrong in buying or selling, Leviticus 25.14. Not to make a loan to an Israelite on interest, Leviticus 25.37. Not to borrow on interest, Deuteronomy 23.20. Not to take part in any usurious transactions between borrower and lender, neither as a surety or a witness, nor as a writer of the bond for them, Exodus 22.14. Well, that just about wipes away the entire Rothschild family then. To lend a poor person, Exodus 22.24. Okay. Um, it's not obligatory. Um, not to demand from a poor man repayment of his debts when the creditor knows that he can't pay, um, nor press him. Exodus 22:24. Not to take a pledge utensils used in preparing food. Um, Deuteronomy 24:6. Not to exact a pledge from a debtor by force. Deuteronomy 24:10. Not to keep the pledge from its owner at the time when he needs it, Deuteronomy 24.12. To return a pledge to his owner, Deut Deuteronomy 24.13. Not to take a pledge from a widow, Deuteronomy 24.17. Not to commit a fraud in measuring, Leviticus 19.35. To ensure that the scales and weights are correct, Leviticus 19.36. Not to possess inaccurate measures and weights, Deuteronomy 25. 13 and 14. Next one might be a bit controversial, but I can assure you there's more slaves alive today than there ever has been. So this is about employees, servants and slaves. Not to delay payment of a hired man's wages, Leviticus 19.13. You know, many big uh, businesses have been doing that to pretty much all of us these days. Um, that the hired labourer shall be permitted to eat of the produce he is reaping, Deuteronomy 23.25-26. That a hired labourer shall not take more than he can eat, Deuteronomy 23.25. That a hired labourer shall not eat produce that is not being harvested, Deuteronomy 23.26. To pay wages to the hired man at the due time, Deuteronomy 24.15. To deal judiciously with the Hebrew bondman in accordance with the laws appertaining to him, Exodus 21, 2-6, not to compel the Hebrew's servant to do the work of a slave, Leviticus 25, 39, not to sell a Hebrew servant as a slave, Leviticus 25, 42, not to treat a Hebrew servant rigorously, Leviticus 25, 43, not to permit a Gentile to treat harshly a Hebrew bondsman, sold to him, Leviticus 25.53, not to send away a Hebrew bondsman, servant empty-handed when he is freed from service, Deuteronomy 15.13, to bestow liberal gifts upon the Hebrew bondsman at the end of his term of service, and the same should be done to a Hebrew bondswoman, Deuteronomy 15.14, to redeem a Hebrew made servant, Exodus 21.8, not to sell a Hebrew made servant to other persons, Exodus 21.8. To espouse a Hebrew made servant, Exodus 21.8-9. Which they actually did them for many African um, servants as well. So, hey, you know, um, a, lot, a lot of Jewish law was actually done for a lot of African slaves. So, I mean, um, they've prospered, you know, uh, under these laws. To keep the Canaanite slave forever. Leviticus 25.46, that would be awesome. Not to sur um, surrender a slave who has fled to the land of Israel to his owner who lives outside Palestine. There you are, Deuteronomy 23.16. Not to wrong such a slave, Deuteronomy 23.17. Not to muzzle a beast while it is working in produce which it can eat and enjoy. Okay, Deuteronomy 25.4. Okay, this time we'll leave you in peace, not in pieces, that a man should fulfil whatever he has uttered, Deuteronomy 23.24, not to swear needlessly, Exodus 27, not to violate an oath or swear falsely, Leviticus 19.12,
an element of vows according to the rules in Numbers 32 to 17, not to break a vow in Numbers 33, to swear by his name truly, Deuteronomy 10, 20, not to delay fulfilling vows or bringing free will offerings, Deuteronomy 23, 22.